Have you ever wondered why the universe chose light as its first language? Not matter, not gravity, not even time, but light? A single photon, born deep in the heart of the sun, spends over 10,000 years pushing through a turbulent sea of plasma, scattered and slowed at every step. And when it finally breaks free, it races through the emptiness of space for just eight more minutes before landing gently on your skin. And in that same instant, another photon, launched from a quasar more than 13 billion light years away, is still traveling through time, through dust, through the stretched and trembling fabric of space time, making its way slowly toward your eyes. Two beams of light, two lifetimes, one born in your cosmic backyard, the other echoing from the edge of the beginning, and yet they arrive together, right here, right now, the very moment you look up. One is warm, familiar, anchored in the present. The other is cold, distant, ancient. But what if neither is random? What if these aren't just particles of light, but messages, intentional signals from something greater? And if everything is connected by unseen threads across time, across space, then who or what tied them together? Welcome to Astro, where we explore not just the mysteries out there, but the quiet echoes that stir in here. Close your eyes for a moment. Imagine yourself drifting silently in space, just outside Earth's reach. In front of you, the sun, a vast living sphere of plasma, over a million kilometers wide, burning without rest. Its golden light stretches across the darkness, gently touching the surface of a pale blue planet and eventually your skin. Every second, the sun consumes more than 4 million tons of matter just to keep itself balanced between the crushing inward pull of gravity and the outward force of radiation. It doesn't explode. It doesn't fade. It simply holds, like a heartbeat, slow, steady, echoing into the silence. And it's been beating like that for four and a half billion years. The sun doesn't just give light. It gives order. It anchors the orbits of everything we know. It stabilizes, it returns. No matter where you are on Earth, no matter how short or long the day, its light always finds its way back. But if you lift your eyes past the sun, beyond its warmth, beyond time, you'll find something far less gentle. A quasar, not a star, not even a galaxy but the furious heart of one, a place where matter spirals into a supermassive black hole and, in its final moments, erupts into light, just before vanishing. A black hole swallows light, that's what defines it, but around it spins an accretion disk, a whirlpool of gas and dust so compressed by gravity it heats to unimaginable temperatures. From this edge of erasure, light escapes, brighter than entire galaxies combined. Some quasars are so luminous we can still see their light today, even though it left long before Earth existed. This isn't the light that nurtures life. It's the light of endings, of transformation, the final scream of matter before it's gone, a flare in the dark from the universe's most violent age. And still, somehow it reaches us. One source of light, warm, familiar, close, the other distant, fierce, cold. But both are centers. Both are origins. One breathes life, the other clears the way for creation. One is the present, the other a memory from the beginning. Maybe they're not so different. Maybe they're two reflections of the same thing what physics might call energy, and what intuition might feel as intention. And if both of their lights meet right now in your eyes, 
then maybe the universe was never truly divided into near and far. Maybe distance itself is part of how light tells its story. Light might be the strangest thing the universe has ever created. It has no mass, yet it carries momentum. It needs no medium to move, yet it bends under gravity. It behaves like a wave and like a particle. And somehow it always moves at the same speed, no matter how fast you're going or in what direction, which is strange, but also somehow perfect. In physics, light is more than a phenomenon. It's a messenger, a way for the past to reach the present. Every time we look through a telescope, we're not just seeing objects. We're receiving stories carried across time. Some of them started their journey billions of years ago, and they still find us. The light from our sun begins deep in its core, where pressure fuses hydrogen into helium, releasing energy. But the light doesn't escape immediately. It bounces for thousands of years through a dense plasma, scattered, delayed, lost, before it finally breaks free. And only then does it travel the last eight minutes to reach Earth, so when it touches your skin, it's not just warmth. It's a survivor. A photon that began in darkness, collided its way through chaos, and somehow made it. Maybe light was never meant to be straight. Maybe it was always meant to be shaped by struggle, by change. With quasars, light is born from something far more violent. There's no core, no fusion, just a black hole. A region of space that, by definition, swallows light, yet still ends up creating the brightest objects in the known universe. Not from the black hole itself, but from the edge from the accretion disk where gas and dust spiral inward at unimaginable speeds. As they collide, they heat up, grind together, and release energy across the entire electromagnetic spectrum. Visible light, X-rays, even radio waves. Some quasars shine brighter than 10,000 galaxies combined. And that's not the strangest part. Astronomers have found quasars that pulse with perfect regularity, like something deep inside is ticking. Some say it's evidence of binary black holes locked in orbit, spiraling toward merger. But others imagine something else. What if a civilization wanted to send a message? One that could last, travel, and never go unnoticed? What better carrier than a quasar. So maybe this isn't just radiation. Maybe it's rhythm, a signal, a language we haven't learned to read. From the warmth of sunlight to the violence of quasars, science gives us tools to study light, to measure it, simulate it, explain it. But light, by its nature, still hides something. It is both visible and veiled and it leaves us with one question science hasn't answered. If light always moves the same through every frame of time, what exactly is it connecting? Maybe everything we've discovered is just the beginning, and maybe light after all is not just energy, maybe it's a doorway. Why did quasars blaze with such intensity at the dawn of the universe? while stars like our sun came so much later, shining with a quieter, gentler light. That question isn't just about time. It opens something deeper, a maze where physics, philosophy, and the very nature of existence begin to blur together. In the early universe, just a few hundred million years after the Big Bang, galaxies were already forming around black holes billions of times more massive than the sun, these giants seemed to appear almost instantly, and to this day, no one really knows how. What kind of force could have pulled that much matter into one point in so little time? 
Some theories suggest they weren't built from stars at all, but formed directly from the collapse of massive clouds of primordial gas. These were called direct corrupt black holes. Others proposed something stranger, that maybe the early universe played by different rules. That the constants of physics themselves, the ones we take for granted, might have shifted, and in that different rhythm, that different logic, maybe light had to erupt first, violently, to carve space for what would come next. And then, something changed. The era of quasars faded. Light softened. It stopped scorching the sky. It began to warm it instead. It became the kind of light that could sustain life. There is a concept in philosophy called cosmic teleology. The idea that the universe doesn't just expand, it evolves with purpose. In that view, light isn't just a byproduct of physics. It's a signal, a movement, a journey from chaos toward consciousness, from raw energy to something that begins to notice itself. If that's true, then maybe quasars were the overture and stars like our sun are the steady breath of a cosmos coming into maturity. Seen this way, light becomes a kind of voice, one that changes with time. At first, a shout, then gradually a whisper soft enough for life to hear it. Or maybe it's simpler than that. Maybe we only have to look at ourselves. When we're born, we cry. When we grow, we speak. And when we begin to understand, we start to listen. So maybe the sun and the quasar aren't opposites at all. Maybe they're just two notes in a longer cosmic melody, one we've barely started to hear. Maybe light, at some level, is more than energy. Maybe it's awareness, learning how to speak. And in this maze of light, maybe the one searching for direction isn't just us. Maybe it's the universe itself, trying to remember something, trying to return. Through each glance, each question, each time we look up, and if all of it somehow is beginning to align, then the real question is who or what set it all in motion. As to physics, light is a ripple, an electromagnetic wave traveling through the vacuum of space. It doesn't need air or water or matter. It simply moves, it carries energy, it transfers information, it touches every interaction in the universe. But more than that, light carries time. Every beam of light that reaches your eyes is a message from the past, a physical memory, a remnant of something that already happened. The sunlight warming your skin right now left the sun eight minutes ago. The glow from a distant quasar that photon began its journey over 13 billion years ago. We don't actually see the present, we see the arrival of the past still catching up to us. And yet, light doesn't just belong to equations. It lives another life, quietly, inside our imagination. For thousands of years, light has meant more than photons. It has symbolized awakening. In Buddhism, Enlightenment is often described as an inner light, piercing through illusion. In Christianity, God is called light, the truth, the way, the life. In Taoist thought, light is the essence of the Tao, silent, unseen, but always present. And maybe it's no coincidence that cultures separated by oceans and millennia all saw light as the same thing, awareness, consciousness, the moment the fog lifts. So, if the sun gives warmth, and a quasar holds the echo of the beginning, maybe the universe is offering more than radiation. Maybe it's giving us metaphors hidden right there, inside the light. Because light isn't just physical, it's the thread that runs between matter and meaning. It lives inside the lab, in equations and instruments. 
But it also lives in poetry and in the eyes of a child, seeing a rainbow for the first time. It's invisible until you look. And when you do, it's everywhere. It can be measured in wavelengths and amplitudes, but it can also move you as it falls through trees or breaks through clouds at dusk. One physicist once said, we don't actually see objects. We only see the light they reflect. In other words, everything you've ever called the world has only ever been light, touching your mind. So if light is the foundation of every perception, the question becomes, is it just a physical process or something deeper, something that connects directly to awareness itself? Some thinkers, like David Bohm, have wondered whether light might carry not just energy, but structure. Not just data, but pattern. A hidden intelligence embedded within the chaos. Another idea from the holographic principle suggests that all the information in our universe could be stored on a two-dimensional surface projected through light itself. If that's true, then light doesn't just illuminate the cosmos, it contains it. Which means when you look at the sun or turn your eyes toward a quasar, you're not just seeing a physical event. You're seeing a symbol, a living signal, one that might be both light and language. And if something is whispering through that light, then maybe quietly, the one it's whispering to is you. By now, we've followed light across its journey as far as physics can take us. We've talked about fusion, about plasma, about black holes, and the strange machinery that sculpts the cosmos. But there's still one question, quiet, almost childlike, that science hasn't fully answered. Why does light exist at all? Why isn't the universe just dark? Why does it shine? Maybe, as the models suggest, light is simply the result of natural laws, a product of cold logic, equations unraveling in the void. But maybe it's more than that. Maybe light is how the universe becomes aware of itself, a mirror, a signal, a way for matter not just to exist, but to mean something. Carl Sagan once said, we are a way for the universe to know itself. And if that's true, then every time you look at the sun or watch the faint flicker of a distant quasar appear in your telescope, you're not just witnessing energy. You're witnessing connection, a bridge between your eyes and everything that ever was. From the Big Bang to now, from the heart of a black hole to the quiet center of your own. Maybe light isn't just motion. Maybe it's memory, a kind of ancient intent. Still unfolding, not just to see, but to be seen. And if every photon carries a message, then who or what wrote those messages into being? Light touches everything, the trees, the stone, your skin. But when it reaches your eyes, it enters a different kind of space, an inner one, where meaning happens, where something unspoken starts to resonate. So when you look up toward the sun or into the deep past, toward the farthest quasar we've ever found, is something looking back? If this video helped you see light, not just as a physical thing, but as something quietly sacred, you're welcome to leave a thought below, not a comment, a response from your mind to the mystery. And if you'd like to keep walking this path where the universe is explored not just through science, but through silence, you're welcome to subscribe to Astro. Let's keep listening to what the universe is whispering, because maybe light still has more of its story to tell.